Hey guys, it's Simon and welcome to number 8 of the video log of our dungeon crawler game. So this week I was a little bit lazy, I did not uh, make that much progress as I expected because yeah, I was a little bit lazy. At birthday, met my family, some party and so on and yeah, then I'm an old guy, I cannot make party and then work the, the next day, that's not possible anymore. But still uh, made some progress this week and I was working now on the audio system. So I introduced now in the comments package an audio service. So there you have uh, an API for playing sound, playing music in uh, libgdx, then to also pause, resume the sounds and to stop the music and stop all sounds of a specific uh, sound file. And also uh, update, I come to that in a moment, because the approach that I used here I think is very similar to the one that I used in Dark Matter, but uh, not 100% sure. So there are two audio services currently available. One is the default audio service, similar to the map service, it's just an empty, empty implementation, which does nothing and prevents you from uh, null services if you need that so that you always have at least a default service available if you need it. And the important implementation is the Q audio service. So there uh, is a, an example implementation how to handle everything and uh, what it does. So it currently supports that you can play one uh, music track at a time and uh, you can also play as many sound requests at a time but at most uh, the number that you pass in here so the max simultaneous sounds this is the maximum amount of sounds that will be played uh, within a frame and why is it a queue uh, the reason is that for the play sound logic itself um, it does not immediately play the sound file uh, it just creates a, a request and uh, imagine that, for example, you have an explosion effect sound in your game and for whatever reason within one frame you would play that five times or ten times or whatever. And what would happen? So if you play the same sound file multiple times within a frame, then it just gets louder. And at one point it will then explode the ears of the players. And to avoid that, we have a queuing mechanism in here. I read that I think once in one of the many books that I read about libgdx, but not 100% sure anymore where. Uh, but in the end, what you do, so you request that a specific sound gets played. This is then checked. So is there already a request in that specific frame for that sound file. Uh, if yes, then just uh, the volume of the request is adjusted and if no, then a new request is created. I also use a pool here for uh, memory improvements and the request always contains the volume, the file path and if the sound should be looped or not. And then the important part is the update method which should be called then every frame and there if there are requests, so sound requests that should be played, then I simply iterate through all the requests of that specific frame and play then the sound with the specific settings and free up the, the requests to, yeah, to, to free the, the memory up for the next frame, let's say. And with that approach, we avoid that one specific sound file cannot be played multiple times in a single frame. So it's not forbidden to have the same sound uh, with a little bit of a delay, for example, with a double jump in a in a platformer or something like that, but uh, within one single frame it's not allowed and therefore we avoid that the uh, sound file gets played super loud. Um, yeah, then also in the abstract game class there I added now also the audio service as an abstract uh, property so the user needs to decide if he wants to use an audio service or if he wants to use audio in his game or not. If you want to use it you can for example use the Q audio service. If you don't care about that then just use the default audio service and then nothing happens. Anyway, if you don't call the API then nothing will happen. And also the abstract uh, screen calls then the audio service method. So the pause method, the resume and the update in every frame. And how does that look like now? So what, what has changed since the last time? Let's start up the game. So I hope... Uh, let me make it a little bit louder. Okay, I think like that you should be able to hear now the, the in-game sound. Okay, it's actually a li <laughs> little bit too loud now. Let's go a little bit down. And yeah, you can see also there's uh, 
an ambient sound system. This is the, the last class here at the top. And what it does, let me mute the music for a moment. So it's like this. So uh, first of all, it plays this cave background sound all the time. So this wind flowing, whistling and so on. This is one part of the ambient sound system. And the second part is that with a random amount of time, so for this demonstration currently I reduce the time a lot, so currently between 3 seconds and 5.5 seconds, there is always a random sound effect played, like this, this dragon growl or this goblin and so on. And these are those sounds that you hear all the time. Uh, the default settings that I used for the game so far is currently 30 seconds and 55 seconds for one specific sound effect, but again for the demonstration I reduced the, the time that you can hear that. And yeah, so this is the, the ambient sound system here. Then also when we minimize the game, the music stops, also the sound effect stops and nothing is processed anymore. This is now also part of the abstract screen that this is happening. And when we open up the game again, then the sound and the, the music resumes and also the, the game logic uh, goes back. Then uh, in addition, I also added something to the map support. So if you if your map now has a let's let's close the game to avoid this the scrolling all the time. So when you have a music file path property which links to a valid uh, music file, then the map service when you change the map will now also automatically play that music. And what did I do there? So let's return that to the normal settings so that we don't have that all the time. So my idea here is that in normal dungeons you have like a, a harmless mute background music, so like this one, so nothing is going on really. But then every five levels or so, where I want to place then maybe a, a boss enemy, then the music changes to something more exciting, let's say. So here it's currently at for test purposes in the second level, so there's now a more exciting music, which brings the the blood flowing and yeah pumps you up for the for the upcoming boss fight and yeah the final thing that i did then this week was to add some basic sound effects so for example for the menu that we had before and also for opening the chest so for example here when you open this chest you have now this little blob sound and also in the menu when you navigate around there is some sound effect and also when you use or equip something there's also now some sound effects added to that. And yeah, that's it, what I made this week. Um, yeah, that, that was the progress for this week. So the audio service, and that's mainly it. And for next week, I've planned to work on the shader support so that uh, the, the things that you can act with on the map get highlighted a little bit with an outline shader. Um, there I need to think how to implement that. That is what I want to do. And after that, so mostly, most likely then in two weeks, I will then work on the combat system so that the player can then interact with an enemy, fight, learn skills and so on, which should then be the interesting part, let's say, of the game to make it a, a real game. Okay, that's it again. Thanks for watching. Have a nice Sunday and bye bye.